If you can't have fun on today's podcast, I don't know, Joey, because I, I got to share a story with you that Uh-oh. I just always love <laughs> just thinking back into my memory as we listen to podcast guests. For some reason, there's always a story that comes along. I, I would expect nothing less from you, Russ. All right. So today's podcast guest was talking about things that he was doing in college and shortly after college, like flipping houses and flipping land to the tune of making $10,000 a month in cash flow. That is the opposite <laughs> of the story that I'm about to tell you. Well, I, I can imagine if it involves you, you were doing uh, quite the opposite in college and shortly thereafter. Well, so here, here's the story. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to share this with you, but I want to make sure you know that today's podcast guest is a community member, somebody that is, is freely given. And I, I love it because today's story hopefully will inspire you to take action if you haven't already. If you need to to touch base with one of our coaches and you want to like follow what Kevin's story was today, I'm going to encourage you to go to westwildwallstreet.com forward slash free call. Get a 15-minute call. Create clarity. All right. So today's podcast, he mentioned what he would say was gambling at one point, right, where he, he bought three houses to flip in his first year, having never flipped a house ever in his life. Yeah, I would say that was a pretty big gamble. And he said, hey, I learned more in the situation where I lost $50,000 flipping one of those houses than in the situation where I actually made 90000 Yeah, that was, to me, the most wise statement of the day. You're going to want to hear more behind that. For All sure. right, so here, here's my story for you, Joey. And this is like the most idiotic situation I could say. Thankfully, I was just a bystander, not an actual participant. When I, I moved up to Baltimore right after college, and a buddy of mine who was up there had gotten into online gambling. Okay. So like Texas Hold'em, poker, what do we got going on? No, no, no. He was um, online blackjack. <laughs> I'm sorry. What? <laughs> You're probably trying to process that saying, wait a second. I, I would not think that that could be regulated very well. There's going to be a rigged game on online blackjack. Not to mention, you know, one, it was illegal in the state he was doing it in. <laughs> Two, you know, the site was like offshore somewhere. So, like, it, it, if you're going to raise a complaint, who are you going to raise it to? Yeah, this is not going to go well. So he he goes out and, and he, he comes home, I'm, come over to his house after work. And he's like, dude, guess what came in the mail today? I'm like, what? He's like, I got a credit card. I was like, okay, oh, no. we're going out tonight, aren't we? He's like, no, sitting down at the blackjack table. I'm like, we're going to Atlantic City? He's like, no, sitting down at, at the blackjack table right here at the computer. Oh, gosh. <laughs> and I'm like, oh, no. Okay, let's do this thing, man. Let's do this. Let's pony up. <laughs> Entertainment for the night. So for the next probably 45 days, I watched him lose $10,000 playing blackjack online that is painful and, and there there's no lesson to be learned from this other than please lord never let somebody i know get a ten thousand dollar credit limit and go online <laughs> and do that again well i mean here's the funny part about this is you got a guy literally out of college who is doing online blackjack and another guy out of college has created ten thousand a month in passive income and they're literally the same age. Yeah, one lost ten thousand dollars. One was making it per month by using his mind <laughs> in a positive way. Man, so this is this is Kevin Sue. We're going to introduce you to Kevin Sue today. Uh, as Russ mentioned, he's a member of our community. as a client. He has taken land flipping and infinite banking. We talk, call that the peanut butter jelly sandwich. By the way, if you've never heard of land flipping, you got to go check out our friends at thelandgeek.com. They have some great resources there to teach you the basics all the way up to private coaching to help you um, with your own course to passive income. So make sure to check that out. But man, is Kevin's story not like amazing for anybody sitting there saying, how can I get to financial freedom? Yeah. If you have questions of does infinite banking really work? How does someone evaluate it? Does land flipping really work? And how, how how long would it take me to create some meaningful cash flow? This podcast should be able to share it. And you're going to get to hear just raw, just Kevin, just sharing. And, and we're asking questions. I hope this is a great interview for you to get feedback on and to get encouraged by someone probably just like yourself. Unfortunately, 
unlike my buddy. <laughs> so let's jump into this interview today with Kevin Sue. Welcome to the Wealth Without Wall Street podcast, your guide to understanding how to get out of the Wall Street rat race and start your own mailbox money lifestyle. Now, don't let these handsome Southern draws fool you. These financial minds are teaching our country to enhance savings, increase cash flow, and create passive income, all without the help of Wall Street. Are you ready to break through? Now, here are your hosts, Russ Morgan and Joey Murray. All right, Kevin, as we got into today's um, meeting ahead of time, you were just sharing with us that in college you were studying something other than your major courses. Tell us a little bit about what you got involved with and how that kind of catapulted your whole career. Yeah, so, well, before I started college, I always wanted to, you know, run my own business, uh, do my own things. Uh, and while I was in college, I was uh you know, I was, uh, I was exposed to local real estate investing, uh, through several networking groups. And I decided to take a try at it before I was ready. <laughs> and I was literally not ready to do it. Um, but I didn't want to wait. So I pulled the trigger. I started, uh, I started a house flip, um, on the, in the second year of my college, I think. And then, um, I just felt that the market was so strong. I could not afford to wait. Then um, I cannot afford to wait on the third, second and third deal before the first one is finished. And uh, I took on three houses on the, on the first year. <laughs> it was, uh, it got a little crazy. I had to pull, uh, pull time off of my school. So I took a leave of absence. Uh, I took on managing three projects myself. Imagine like this is my first year in real estate investing. Like, <laughs> yeah. So I'm, I'm listening to you. You're a college student. You've never done real estate before. And then all of a sudden you're like, I'm going to do home flipping. I'm going to get into this real estate game. And the market's so hot. Let's go ahead and do three. <laughs> it just <laughs> happened that way. I mean, the deal came in. The lender was willing to lend. Well, you know, you know, like hard money lender, they, they, they will lend to anyone. Yeah. Uh, as long as you have assets backing up. Um, you know, that it wasn't, it wasn't wise for me to do that because I, I had no cash flow. Like I could not recoup capital by, um, by flipping the house until I sold it. Mm. So I took significant, uh, leverage, uh, and in winter was pretty tough because we have a house. I think I finished the first one on market and I was like in the middle of winter when the, when the, when the market is slower. So it's harder to sell in that time. And, uh, that was the first, that was the first lesson I learned, which is about like, if you are going to do flips, there's no cash flow you have to, you have to know how to project those, uh, those stream of, uh, transactions. You have to match them up, which is really hard. Mm. So then when, once you kind of went through that, what, what was your next phase? Like you realize flipping could be profitable, right? but it was also hard on cash flow and other things. What else did you learn from that? And then what did that lead you to? Well, it was, um, you know, it was really about cash flow and um, predictability uh, that deterred me from flips. So um, I did flips for one more year. Um, and as I graduated college, I decided to give it a try uh, to lend investing. Um, and I joined the Langi group uh, many people probably on your podcast have talked about it. Mm. Um, I started that uh, the year before last year or something like that. So I've been doing this for a year now. But um, wait, a, wait a minute, wait a minute. Not everybody just graduates college and they're like, hey, by the way, there's this land geek <laughs> stuff. Like, how, how did you come across Mark Podolsky in the land geek? So I was reading because I was looking for investment that's more predictable, right? I was looking for something that's more um, that has probably a cash flow or some sort of um, um, some sort of collateral, some sort mm -hmm. of collateral. Uh, I was trying some private money lending. I was trying some. Uh, I was trying to learn tax lien investing, 
Um, and as I bought some texting investing books on Amazon, the all my, the all my algorithm recommended the Mark Podolsky's Dirt Rich book. I read that. Uh, I was fascinated by it. I felt like land is such an in- efficient market. Mm. Um, and I thought, I would love to be in an efficient market because that's, that's where the investors make money. Um, so land investing really appealed to me because you can sell the land and you, you can basically buy an asset that, that prints off cash, right? You buy, you buy an asset, you sell it on notes and you get those monthly payments. Now, when, when I was flipping, uh, when I was flipping houses, I had this goal of making 10 K a month. Right. That was like, that was like my target. And I was getting really excited because I thought to myself, I have to flip, I think three to five houses to average about that monthly income. Uh But, uh, with land investing, I actually got there in a year. I actually got there in a year with the monthly notes. Of course, that's, that's including all the property tax payments and no servicing fees and all that. But, um, you know, it, it's achievable, uh, through a lot of notes. All right. So I want to like, when I got just, I'm just thinking about questions and, and if you're listening to Kevin, you can tell he, he's not the average Joe. Like he, he is thinking at a much higher level. His brain is processing things at a fast speed and you're, and he's also not scared to take action. By the way, by the way, Russ, how many houses did you flip in your uh, sophomore year? Um, at Auburn. Well, I mean, internally, we flipped a bunch of them. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> there's not a whole lot of uh, we we didn't get a lot of security deposits back. If, <laughs> if that's what you mean by flipping them, <laughs> but as far as like making money, yeah, that that would be a zero. That'd yeah. be a, a big whopping going zero. backwards. So that's what I was. That was the question I had. Like I I was studying um, alcohol and um, and extracurricular activities in college. <laughs> And you were studying how to um, how to buy and sell real estate, which is really interesting. What actually was your degree in, Kevin? Uh, it was some sort of business administration. I chose a degree in business where I can customize classes, but yeah. even then, I couldn't take all the classes I want. Yeah. Um, so, so yeah. you you were just get, finding some of the things that were going to give you like the tools you needed to be an entrepreneur. No, exactly. Yeah, that's that was my aim. But uh, there's no, there's no such class in college. <laughs> there's <laughs> there are no class in college. <laughs> yeah, there, there's nothing that teaches you how to take on three houses without any experience in one year uh, with no <laughs> cash flow. That 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 does that doesn't exist because the professors d- have never experienced that. They wouldn't be able to teach it. Well, I think the professor was trying to teach me how not to fail, but um in real life it's it's really the failures that give us lesson i mean we don't i don't i didn't learn anything from the house i i made i made ninety thousand dollars. i didn't know what i was doing it was just the market um and i learned the most from the house i lost fifty thousand dollars. Mm. It, it's 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 a lot of um it's a lot of trial and error um going through investing uh, uh, unpack that for someone who has an experience, what you just said there, that you didn't learn anything from the house that you made 90000 on, but you learned a lot from the one that you lost 50000 on. Talk about some of those experiences. What were some of those learning lessons that you had? I think it's really about um, like how you reflect on what you do, right? Um, I think we tend to reflect more uh, if we lost something. And um, I tend to to uh, every uh, every after um so after every project um i'll do a report uh, i'll talk about the details how the transactions went and what i could have done better um and in those uh houses with a lot of losses i tend to go deeper into what exactly was the inefficiency between you know different uh, renovations and uh how the timeline lapsed uh how the financing um turned out to be more costly than i thought um in the houses i i made a lot of money 
um, I tend to congratulate myself <laughs> and uh, give a pat on the shoulder. Yeah. Are you looking for ways to implement ideas, get exposure to new ones, and be surrounded by people on the same journey as you? Joey, where can they go to do that? Go to wealthwithoutwallstreet.com forward slash community. You can join for free today. That That is so wise what you just said. And I, I'm if you're out there right now and you are trying to think about how to get started and in terms of your own financial freedom and you hear Kevin talk about how he had all the success, it's easy to step back and see like, well, that's just Kevin. I mean, he just, he's different than me. I, I can't do the same thing. But to hear you say that you learn so much from the failures, that empowers others. Because guess what? You're not guaranteed success, nor is success the ultimate direction that will, will be the best servant of you in the future. Like you need to fail your way to, to financial freedom. And I think Russ and I, we, you know, you and I talk about this, like the, the actual formula to financial freedom is easy, but to work to accomplish it is hard. We actually talk about this every week in our, in our uh, mon Monday meeting. And what you're saying right now just gives credence to that. So thank you for sharing that. Uh, Russ, what would you add to that? Well, what would be something that I, I want to kind of unpack this land flipping thing? You mentioned that your goal was to get to 10000 a month of cash flow. And you were thinking it's going to take three to five houses if I flip them on average to get there. But then I got a lot more other issues that I, that I need to accomplish. So one, I want to first start off with how did you come up and why did you come up with $10,000 a month? And then I want to come back to the second part, which is walk us through how you started doing this land flipping thing. As you mentioned, people have heard about land flipping and some are actually starting to go down that road. But you you kind of accelerated that path and in one year. You've gotten to 10,000 in uh, monthly notes. So I, I would love to break that down. But first, Talk about the $10,000 number a month. Where did that come from? Why was that important? And, and how does that play into your bigger thing? Um, I think 10,000, it's, 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 it, there's nothing magical about it, right? Like 10,000 is just, uh, it, it's just a target I set in my mind. Um, you know, the cost of living is quite higher nowadays. And my monthly expenses is about, I don't know, two to $3,000. Depends on where I live. Um, I just felt that that number will give me enough wiggle room for me to really have that, have that, um, you know, peace of mind, uh, that if I stop working for a month or two, I could be fine without working for money. And, uh, I think that will be, you know, that will be a solid st uh, step for me. And, and to your second question, um, land investing was a lot different um was a lot different after six months i started it right um you know we, we always talked about like passive income and um and this huge margin and return on investment in the land investing community but if you really look into it although it is a really good business model it's there is nothing passive about building the land business itself, right? Um, even even if you hold those notes, even if I say like Joey and Russ, I'll, I'll sell you my notes, uh, fifty cents on a dollar. You guys take it. Um, you guys wouldn't be able to service the notes without putting at least hiring one one VA to communicate with borrowers, to make sure that they pay on time and update their billing information when the payments fail. Like mm -hmm. the, the, like this, you know, this business, although it's very good, um, it's not as passive as you wish it could be. Mm -hmm. um, but once you hired um, enough people to run enough process, once you have a system, then it, it is it could be used as a machine that eats a dollar and then pump out four dollars in the span of four to five years, and um, the return on investment is. It's very, it's very good. So talk about the, the steps that you took to learn that business. I mean, it's really impressive 
that you've gotten to this level so quickly in that? Like, what were some of those after you read uh, key, the book key steps after <laughs> reading Dirt Rich that 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 accelerated your path? Uh, I think the book is a start. Um, I joined fly school um, last year, uh, last winter, and uh, right after that, I joined coaching. Mm-hmm. Um, and I think what really, um, what really, uh, what really took off when was when my coach was directly, um, you know, helping me build my own business systems. Um, and I think, yeah, I think it's like, I'll, I'll think of, I'll think of land investing. It's like, it's like education, right? Like, um, and without having a mentor, after you learn all the basics, are, are really hard to execute without someone just standing by your side and helping you be on the right track. Um, I will say that I, I can't go into all the details with all the process. That will take hours. Um, <laughs> but but making sure that um, making sure that you have system in place to process uh, all the things you need to process. Is, is really important in the business. So having people and technology and, and, a, and a, a mentor. Yeah, having a, a coach. I think that that's always important. So the the next question I have is obviously how we kind of got connected is somewhere along the way you learned about infinite banking. And I, I'm curious as to uh, when you learned about that and why did you think that that would help you considering the already success that you were having in both the real estate uh, and land flipping uh, world. Yeah. So I was uh, recommended to look into you guys. Um, and I, I got a big idea of um, like some of the uh, land geek students were practicing infinite banking with you guys. And I don't know what infinite banking was. You know, I like a few years ago, I might have Googled it and I might when I have, uh, I might have went onto a bigger pockets and mm-hmm. searched for the term and nobody, nobody everywhere really knows what this is all about. And, uh, there's a lot of information out there about infinite banking, but, uh, rarely from people who actually practice a lot of it, mm-hmm. uh, speak for it. Uh, I read, uh, Nelson Nash book, uh, becoming your own banker. I was instantly, uh, hooked on it. Um, mm-hmm. I really love the analogy of uh, a loaded airplane that's getting more efficient over time. Yeah. And um, I'm a big believer that tax and inflation are going uh, higher, will be higher than people expect. And I think, um, I really think that um, the, the insurance premium is not a cost, but an obligation for our future self. Um, so, um, uh, and I think uh, infinite banking works really well with, uh, anything, anything that cash flow, uh, you can use it for debt management, which I, I don't, I don't really need. Um, but I have cash flow in my business and I need to finance land purchases. Um, and I think it's a great, it has a great synergy with that. Well, talk about the the ease at which you've been able to do that. I, I think that that's always a question for someone who hasn't done infinite banking before. They want to know, like, how does it actually work? Like, it when I, you know, talk about the first time you took a policy loan and what did you do and how did it work and and what did you do after that? Uh, I actually t- took a test policy loan um, just to see how it works. Um, uh-huh. I didn't. I haven't integrated really like really experienced with uh using it for my business but i applied it online uh for a loan and uh the money was in my bank account in uh i think three to four days it was really quick um and through all the through all the things i've learned about uh insurance policy i mean the contract is really um it's really solid for as a borrower I mean, the, the borrower has a lot of rights um, that traditionally, if you work through a bank, the bank has more stronger terms than you. 
Right. Um, <laughs> yes. But knowing that if I can borrow against it, and if something happens that I have to delay payments, that's not something I will worry about with the infinite banking. So tell us, as far as the policy is concerned, was there anything else about it that you were just like, game on? Like, this makes all the sense in the world. I need to move forward on this. Is there some part of the policy that that was uh, strikingly making me decisive uh, yeah. about signing it up? Yeah. yeah. I will say that um, it, it's it's about, um, I, don't, I don't know how the policy is exactly worded, but this one part is, says that, um, that as a policy owner, you have the absolute control of the policy and that you can, you have the highest priority to request a loan. Mm. And this is, this is something, um, this is something, this is something that really appeals to me. Uh, I think if we were, uh, to put money in a place that we felt that is safe, it has to be accessible. Like it has to be liquid. Um, you don't, you don't want to have, you want, you don't want to build a reservoir that's so big, but you can't access it when you need it. Um, so that was the part that was, that was appealing to me the most. Uh, I think having control over my own finances is crucial to me. And, um, and this is, it has to, this has to be part of the deal. Well, and the fact that you've been able to kind of be uh, geographically free and be able to move around and you're, you're running a business that you can do virtually, you have other people who are doing a lot of the day-to-day function, keeping your cash in a very liquid place. I love all of these things, Kevin. Like, this is amazing that you've learned this at such a young age. To be honest with you, it kind of pisses me off that I didn't know that <laughs> stuff myself. And I couldn't have come up with those ideas without many, many years uh, of trying, um, doing other things. So I, I'm totally jealous um, of, of how successful you have become so early. And I'm really thankful, too, that you've come on to, to share uh, really uh, unselfishly, this is something we we asked uh, you to come on and if you would mind sharing and, and there's no gain here other than you just giving. And I really appreciate that because that's uh, an amazing uh, aspect and, and characteristic of your character. Thank you guys for having me. Uh, I hope this helps your audience decide uh, whether, if, you know, if this is the path for them. And uh, I benefit a lot from you guys' uh, free education. Um, podcast was free. I think the best things in life are free and, uh, you guys supply plenty of it. So thank you. Well, Kevin, uh, man, I, I just can't thank you enough for being a part of our community. Uh, if you are not a part of our community, by the way, go to wealth of dot com forward slash community, and you can join today. You can be in the same room with guys like Kevin Sue, uh, reaching out to him. I'm sure he'd, he'd be willing to share anything as he has today. Um, Guys, join us on the path to financial freedom in our community. Thank you for listening to our show. Kevin, thanks again for being here. And we'll catch you on the next episode. This has been the Wealth Without Wall Street podcast. Don't forget to subscribe to the show to break free of the Wall Street mindset and begin building wealth on your own terms in places you understand so that your wealth will never run dry. See you next episode.